That's a catchy little Hello, thing. everybody, and a hello, wife. How are you? Hi. We are here live, and we want you to give us a call. We're going to have a number across the bottom of the screen there, and it's uh, July the 20th, is it? it? Is. 21st, All or something like that? Yep. My birthday was just a bit ago. It was. And uh, uh, I turned... 65. Oh, my goodness. I've I was going to lie to a 65-year-old man I, before. I, no. <laughs> uh, and probably never will be again. So um, enjoy it while it lasts. Okay. All right. Now, this has been a season that is ridiculous. We have rain, and then we have rain, and then there's a little more rain. And then in between there, we have thunderstorms. And some blistering heat. Yeah. Like today. Well, I the mean, heat has been not as bad not as it could many, have been. Right, that's true. There's not too many days over 90, so we've been cut. So and, far. of course, the rain has something to do with mm -hmm. that, knocking it mm -hmm. back. But the, today, the humidity is, is quite oppressive. Wow, it's quite oppressive. sticky out Yeah, um, uh, just walking out. And the plants have to live in that all the time. And I'm sure uh, we're getting uh, the reason that we're getting a lot of cards and letters and mail in regard to funguses and blights and uh, even insect uh, infestation is because of the wet weather and the extended wet weather way up into July, which is way past when anybody expects it to come down. Many, many people are concerned about mosquitoes and, of course, all of the, the things that the mosquitoes carry, which most of it is not good. No. And... Ticks. Ticks are a big, major concern of many, many people. We have some organic remedies for ticks, for mosquitoes, for all insects uh, that we've done a little research on and so forth and found that they are uh, quite, uh, quite a good alternative for you to consider. Uh, we've also done some research into some of the other products that are not um, my ear thing wants to fall out, that are um, not organic. Well, I want to make uh, sure you can hear me, so plug that thing back <laughs> in. <ain't you? laughs> I get my bell tone uh, adjusted there, right? <laughs> but uh, that are not organic that you probably may want to consider repeating because they may have flushed out of the ground. The, the uh, applications that you put on for weed prevention, for example, if you put those on, you may have, you, you should reapply them because so the rain, so washed away, and right? the rain came uh, raging, yeah, and deluged. it flushed, yeah. and, um, and because of that, this chemical barrier that the weed prevention uh, normally lays down is gone. And so you're going to have to reapply that. Your fertilizers have been leached down or flushed off the top. Uh, whether you use the foliar feed or a granular, it doesn't matter. So reapply your fertilizers. I'm seeing a lot of corn that is not getting to full size that people are mm. saying, well, I planted it right. You know, we've had plenty of rain. Well, yes, but corn requires supplemental nutrition. And if they you don't take a side lot dress, out of the soil, they really have to have a, a lot going in. And they in. need a lot of nitrogen. Right. So they're, a, they're a high nitrogen using... The soil has been diluted of that nutrient, right. which we will speak about in the outtake that we did right. um, showing some plants at our house. Then the nutrients just aren't there for the Absolutely. plant to grow, and that includes and, farm fields of corn. And it it uh, we uh, you will see in in uh, later on too that you, you can flush them out of a pot real quickly. Yes, and you can flush them out of a confined soil very quickly. And uh, but there's it's also true of uh, big fields and uh, but you know it never occurred to me when when somebody says oh well are you using new soil well. I understand that bags of potting soil are, are new and clean, usually of any bacterium and that type of thing. But I didn't, or for some reason it didn't click about the nutrients. Because I figured new soil, old soil, this dirt, that dirt, it, you know. It's all dirt. It, based on what, of course, it's made up of different, you know, broken down materials. But the nutrients never occurred to me that you need to put in new soil plus these bags of potting soil I think have added nutrients. Yes. Anyhow, it's well, not just clean uh, soil. Well, what they have added is, in, in most cases, is they have added compost. And with okay. compost comes nutrients, and with certain types of compost comes different types of nutrients. 
And they do facilitate usually those big piles that are decaying and mm -hmm. uh, even like down here south of town. Um, they, uh, in, the, in the big commercial sites, they supplement that with uh, nitrate of soda or uh, with uh, ammonium nitrate or something to, uh, because you need a lot of nitrogen to make that work. That. And if you don't put that in there, it'll actually starve your plants. So some people have compounded their problem by putting green uh, manures of, of uh, and I'm talking about, you know, freshly ground um, um, trees or, or the um, power and light chips, right. you know, uh -huh. put them around your plants and you're going to starve them of nutrients. Mm -hmm. It'll just draw all of the nitrogen away from the plants and use it. Uh, in the in the decay process of the of the chips. Well, so. another problem with all this rain, it's like when you're doing laundry and you're done washing your clothes and you dry them and everything's wonderful. Well, if you leave those clothes in the washing machine and they stay wet and stay wet and stay wet, everybody knows what happens. They mold, they stink. And a lot of plant diseases have to do with mold. And, and fungus and, fungus and, and fungi. When it never dries out, it seems those things just flourish. We get a lot of root rot, a lot of root decay, a lot of the, um, the things that have to do with moisture in the soil are vastly increased. We weeded some areas this year where the weeds were three and four foot mm -hmm. tall. Mm -hmm. I've never that I can remember, and I've I been in this business a long easy. time. And then as long the as rain, they're wet, yeah, they and that's, that's a, uh, a big, big um, um, uh, clue for you. Uh, if you're weeding anywhere, water it down the night before. Yes. Really water it down well the night before. The next day, the weeds will pull better uh, than, than at any other time. If now, once they dry out. And you break off the top. You've got to know you're wasting your time because oh, yeah. if you go through and pull off all those tops, every single one of them is going to come back. But if you just water it down, like we have actually run the sprinkler for a couple of hours, even in a, a oh, yeah. drought, so that yeah, we can so get that it gets at least off. one inch of water because you want the water to go all the way down to the roots. So you actually yes. want to mud out, <laughs> mud out the roots of the weeds. And when you have weeds that are three and four foot tall, they've got roots that are and seven, eight, ten we've inches. we've worked out in the mud because it, it is a good time. Oh, it's an excellent time. But normally we don't have the benefit of these rains to pull wow. the weeds at this time of the year. Now we have uh, surrounded her greenhouse is this massive jungle that you can't even see the greenhouse. No, I barely have a hole to get in there and do a couple things. It is it is unbelievable the amount of weeds that we have this year. Now we were ill uh, and uh, both of us had some health issues and and so we did uh, not do as much as we normally do. Yeah. Uh, but still, it's it should not be. There at, was at more this point. work than usual to be done as well. Because but we did. Um, do some things that allowed us to have a garden without having to combat the weeds. And we're going to show you about yep. a lot of those things, too. It's easier now, to keep a small section weed-free than it is a large section, depending on, you know, how you're doing it. And there are ways to do it, yeah, to decrease we, the weeds vastly we without chemicals. came up with some chemicals. very uh, cool, inventive ways yeah, of keeping the weeds Most down. of it are ways that other people have, uh, that we've just... Adopted their their methods, but we also have uh, found some things laying around that that we were able to use that that uh, worked out very successfully. Reuse and recycle. She is big on a fall garden because we get cheated out of a spring we garden. Did. So in the fall garden, you need to right now, uh, as soon as you can work the garden, which you know you, there's an issue there, but as soon as you can get in there and that garden dries out just for a moment, you need to, and it doesn't matter if you uh, till it. The yeah, ground doesn't always have to be tilled. We think that it has to be turned, but that's really not necessary. No-till is actually a better way to, uh, to um, uh, grow a garden, uh, but you have to pull the weeds and uh, uh, no-till well, is a different till, process. When you till, aren't you actually turning up and inviting a whole bunch more weeds? Yeah, seeds? you're just pulling up more weed seeds that are down there hey, every guys, time you turn the grow. ground. Yeah. But if you keep uh, just cultivating the very top and adding compost, you decrease your weeds just by doing that. And you also add more nutrients to the soil and so forth. The plants that you need to be considering right now, cabbage, cauliflower, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, lettuce, chard, uh, beets, 
Uh, I think it's a little early for turnips. Um, yeah, there's actually a list. I had several things that were on it. Uh, well, see if you can find that list. But anyway, the, my point is get the plants, and the nurseries now are wise enough to know that, hey, I need to get these plants available to these people and um, for fall gardenings. Fall gardening used to be something that was very rare to be able to find the plants, but now the plants should exist. You should be able to find them. And... I am going to, I'm here to tell you that when you grow into cold weather or when you grow in cold weather, you don't have the bugs and plants have a different nutritional compound. And I, I just happen to know that John, our, the station manager here, loves broccoli. He is broccoli crazy. All types of broccoli. So if you happen to have a little surplus broccoli, you know, you could... Is this maybe, true or are you razzing? Oh, no, no, no. I've, I've heard that he... He might have told you I hate broccoli. No, and certainly. Would I do John, that? John, we I your do input that. out here. What else? <laughs> what else? Well, you know, long, uh, for, <laughs> for a lot, many, many moons, they have talked about gardening by the moon phase. And I think there's something to that. I don't know what. I'm there is definitely, positively, absolutely something to the moon. It. Okay, well, when you put a board out <laughs> in the dark of the moon and it curls down and bows up in the middle, and then you put it out in the light of the moon and it does the opposite. Oh, I got to see this. What do you mean you got to see I this? I want to try I'll show this. it to you. I'll show it to okay. you the next moon phase. And when you say the I'll light, I'll go out and moon you. As a matter of fact, the light of the moon is in any of the waxing you or the light growing of my moon. phases yes. as the as it grows to its full. That's waxing. Waning, think, oh, the flower's waning. It's getting smaller all the way until it's a, you know, till it's gone. So that's your light and your dark. You're waxing and, and you're waning. When I say the light, top of the, of the moon, ground root uh, crops that grow up, yes, are in the waxing. Crops that grow down are in the waning. Okay, right. Well, here's the exact way. Plant annual flowers and vegetables that bear a crop above ground during the light or waxing of what the moon. What I just right. That's what the doctor said. From the said, day the right moon there. is new to the day it is full. Now you plant flowering bulbs biennial. Now I know perennial. What's biennial is in between. It's every okay. other year. And perennials, along with vegetables that bear crops below ground during the dark or waning of the waning moon when it's shrinking day after it's full because it so draws it down. Full. Right. It draws down. Now, the actual moon phase, it could still look full, but it's a day after full, so exactly, you're technically yes, waiting, yes. okay, until the day is new again. Now, this, so what I was thinking is, let's say, okay, for instance, uh, beans, uh, or let's try um, broccoli, since we love broccoli so much, okay? Yes. Now, late season broccoli, okay, it says should be planted but uh, this says oh, end of July, July 25th, something like that. Now, the moon is favorable for it August 1st through 7th. So why not combine and wait the week from their optimum day? You're talking about plants versus seeds. Am I? Yes, because you're, I you want to sow the seeds on these days. This but the actual planting? planting of the plants, I don't think, is as sensitive as the sowing of the seed into the okay, ground. Okay, so we're talking about sowing seeds. Yes. So Now, here is also talking about seeds unless it says transplant next right, to it, right? Right, 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 yeah. Okay, so if I pick something else, like let's say... Uh, Spinach uh, would be something. above ground. Spinach, okay. And that's uh, August. Let's go to spinach, and what does it say there? 5th and the 15th. August, okay. And here, right, but it says here that the optimum planting date is August 1st to September 15th. However, the moon is in your favor if you do it August 1st through August 7th or wait until August 21st so September 1st. So you'd first 6th. through the 7th. Right. And, so you and can if combine. You do, if you combine these and... You go one step further and you use a companion crop, right? which is a plant that enjoys being next to that which is it's beside. Right. If, you, if you look at this companion crop list, it's very, very important. If they are not companions, don't put them together. Now, it does take a little problems. bit of thought to grow a garden. I, I yeah, always it does. thought, you know, oh, you just stick a plant in the ground, whatever you want, you throw it here, throw it there. It does take a little bit of thought and... 
Um, you know, the I location, wondered, the the uh, the soil texture, right. the uh, content of the soil. You really need to do a soil analysis. Like I remember okay, my grandmother so, in Tennessee doing the corn stalks with the beans growing up around yeah, the yeah. corn, and that's from Native American. <laughs> exactly. You know, too, yes, so. it is. Now, okay. we have, uh, oh, by the way, we are live, and we want you to call in with your questions. We 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 get mixed uh, uh, shows. One week, everybody calls. The next time, you know, there's a space in there, and people say, oh, well, by the time I thought I was going to call, the show was over. Yes, well, it is live that must tonight. be because we're entertaining you at a rapid pace. Yes. So either that or, or you're vegging out on me. I don't know what you're doing. But. I don't know. Maybe we got to start doing some crazy antics, you know, be like H Kathy Lee and Hoda or something up here, drinking wine. We are like know. Kathy Lee and Hoda. Are we? Which yeah. one are you? Um, <laughs> here. Nobody, nobody uh, has called yeah, in and said no, anything no. about the absence of my mustache and my beard. No, Nothing. not a word. I don't know. Hold one on. thing I want to hit on about <laughs> after the fall garden. What? Okay is this idea of cover crops. Oh, yeah. After um, your fall harvest, and I just read about this for the first time today. Well, uh, gardeners have been, or, uh, farmers have been doing this for years, and so have gardeners, allowing the soil to rest, putting a crop on there that uh, brings the nutrients up from deep in the soil. And Most of the legumes the do that. They right. fix nitrogens, and they fix things way down deep in the soil, and they bring them all the way to the top, and then you can harvest off the, the hay and, and uh, bale the hay and so forth, but it's still brought up into the root structure. So when you plow that down, all of those nutrients are suddenly available on the top, plus you have the organic matter that you just chewed up, and uh, it really works quite well. well and and you can do reasons. this on a smaller scale, in your yes, in garden. garden and yes. along with um, adding nutrients back into the soil other reasons for be doing it would be for erosion control That's if right. you're on a slant yep. or a very bank. much so because once you harvest look your at what crop, happened at the farm behind our house got loose soil the and one that i used yes, to own back there it, a good rain there was no erosion back there for years and years and years and then they didn't put the but if the after the harvesting on. the corn they had planted say barley rye white clover now one field back there did have clover well it used to be a hay field those were all just hay fields oh. because they flooded and okay. you never put them in crops because the soil then would the price wash of away. corn went so high we well, had well i guess they, so okay and another reason to do what they say Poor is farm to block wheat. so apparently just by planting what you want you're eliminating what you don't want is that the theory or? i guess so now that i'm not sure about the blocking of weeds is new to me I'm not sure. I'd have to research that after and read into harvest. that some more. Uh, if somebody knows a, about that, you know, call in and uh, yes, let us please, know. Yes, please. Maybe the farmer out there knows, you know, the reason. Because all of this other, I'm, I'm very familiar with, uh -huh. uh, we used to plant uh, peas and, and uh, uh, woolly pod they vetch and stuff legumes, up in the north. Some kind of uh, crimson and red clover hairy vetch. I don't know what that is. It it's sounds a crown scary. vetch. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you see him walking the street. Hey, Harry. Yeah, are you watch vetch? Out. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and then the grasses. Uh, you know, barley's rice, Sudan grass. I'm not even sure. But it's not Johnson grass. No, I can tell you, right you better now, not that do that not because a good you can, cover crop. You can uh, get in trouble for a <laughs> plant. You can't for, get rid of it. Yeah, okay. for doing that, you definitely can get in trouble. Uh, we had a lot of questions about how to keep flowers fresh well, this time of the year. And you know what? Your glads are still at the house. I know. I actually cut fresh <laughs> gladiolas today. That we <laughs> He put the bulbs in for me. Uh, I'll be honest with you, I hate bulbs because I have to get down on my knees. It hurts to get up and down, dig giant holes, bury them, and then not see anything out of it for six months. So. And then you got to, on glads, uh, you got to dig them up. However, uh, I do not, not dig up my glads. Nope. I plant them eight inches deep. It takes them longer to come up. It does. And they will actually be winter hardy because of the fact that they don't come up and get froze back. They're up four or five years in a row now. A wee, and bigger clump every time. I have had them last for, so far there's one place where I've had them last for 35 years. Now, I did have a place where I had beautiful glads that had been coming back year after year. And we lost about half of them to a uh, uh, maggot, I think. 
Uh, we first thought they froze out, but I dug them up because I wasn't you sure. darn maggot. That's right. And then on another place uh, that was uh, high uh, out at the Hanson Farm, we lost them there because they did get froze out. And oh. it, was a, it was a horrible cold. Well, it was the year that I got burnt. But you put them a little bit deeper, and all of a sudden... Well, uh, considerably deeper. I'm going about three to four inches well, deeper the than they recommend. Well, the you put in over at uh, the eye care center there, they're coming back every year. They're beautiful, oh, yeah. Oh, but they were so pretty, the ones I cut today and put in a vase. I know, and, and they're out there rotting in the vase. Uh, well, they're not rotting. They're in my, in my but kitchen. there but are ways to keep them fresh Because I asked longer. them today. I was like, you're the garden doctor, so tell me how to make these Aspirin last a long time. and whiskey. <laughs> Well, actually, vodka. Actually, vodka, vodka works better. The uh, the aspirin and the vodka, you know. But it says not. You don't one need for very the much. one for the uh, the patient and one. Well, for and the, here's the reasoning for it. Okay, there, there's several different things that are really good for preserving the life of your flowers. These are cut flowers. Now. Yes, cut flowers. cut flowers and what to put in the water. Well, first of all, when you're cutting flowers, bring a bucket of water. Cut it, put it right in the water. In my opinion... Same way you pick corn. Right. It, the long, if it doesn't go without water, you don't want it to go without water until you get them in the house even. So, yeah. okay, here, bleach. There's a reason bleach is a common ingredient because it helps kill bacteria. And it is the bacteria that is one of the things that will do away with your flowers. It so closes, they talk up about, the, closes up the, arter, the veins. In or, and they're talking in one liter of water, three drops of bleach. Okay, and then in every one of these recipes, pretty much, it calls for sugar, a teaspoon of sugar, because they actually need that sugar to, to do their That's thing. That's what they're and producing in the right. photosynthesis process and everything, is sugars. But now, the old standby, sugars. aspirin, I've heard this for years, and um, they, they believe it's because it makes the water more acidic, which allows water to absorb up the stem more quickly. And acidic soil is less, or water is less likely to get fungus and okay. what have you. All right. Okay. That I could, all now, right. one thing that seemed to be a common across the board, and I thought it was awesome, citrus soda. Okay, 7-Up, Sierra Mist, right. 11th yep. Sprite, anything like that. We used to let them go flat and put them in. Yep. And, yep, and for some reason, because of its citric acid. Does anybody out there remember Neil's Floral Fantasy? It was... I just loved that it. That was a trivia question on the show. Once. I spent hundreds and hundreds of hours out there he putting together it. floral arrangements about and, doing that. He loved and it. with the girls, and they would giggle, and we'd have all kinds of fun. He loves flowers. <laughs> I tease him sometimes. <laughs> I tell him he's such a pansy. Yeah, know, well, and it's not an insult. He Life in it. the big city. But yeah, you got to use that uh, Seven Up, and they say one part soda to three parts water, and it says avoid your diet soda. Because that's right, there's no sugar in it. Right, they want the sugar, and dark colas are too acidic. Okay, so that I did not know. So you want to use the All citrus? All right, uh, it has hmm. the citric acid. It's got the sugar. Got it. All right, now vodka. It says you can use vodka. Vodka also. is for real. You really, really they said can it prevents use vodka. ethylene glass, which, gas, which is what causes wilting. Um, now, he said it contains, you know, it's a lot of alcohol, therefore only a couple of drops yeah, and real, a teaspoon real of weak. sugar, yes. again, because you want that, okay? Right. And you want to freshen this all the time. Yes. Don't, every two or three days, you want to dump that out, That's right. wash off the and stems, and I trim the stems make again. Make a new cut, put them back in, fresh water, fresh vodka. Right. And yep. I, I always have, with roses anyway, if you make a cut, cut it a slant. Because you have actually more Gives you surface more, uh, to of absorb the cambium water. Layer to Is that suck correct? Water. Yep. Okay. Definitely. Now pennies. Here's another thing. Now, of course, it has to be pennies. That I've never heard of. This is brand new. Made before 1982. Because has to after have copper. 1982, they had very little copper. Yeah, they're all full of crap. But they claim the copper um, acts like a fungicide and inhibits bacteria and fungus. Which we use copper yes. uh, in a, in sprays. We use it in uh, so home many orchard things. sprays. We use it in all kinds of fungus preventing things. And they even claim if you wear it in your sock, it'll cure arthritis or something else. <laughs> it was John. Tommy socks. Yeah, oh something. yeah, those those back braces. Yeah, <laughs> Made all that with stuff. Copper or something. There you go. And last but not least, hairspray. Now this never occurred to me, but it makes sense. Yeah, now, we not used to so use much that on our fresh flowers. Front yeah. of the flowers. Just make sure to get the undersides of the petals. It makes them but stick. But do it from and, several inches sure, away, yeah. and it will kind of just keep them where they are yeah, instead of kind of semi glues them in and place a little bit. And last but not least was the apple uh, cider vinegar. Apple cider vinegar. Um, Always two tablespoons, apple cider vinegar. two tablespoons of sugar with that, 
to the vase water and you're all good to go and change it more often. Now let me tell you, you can extend the life of these cut flowers by weeks. I have not literally days, had flowers not weeks. days, weeks. What bouquet was it you got me for Mother's Day or something? The last one I, I got. You. I trimmed them every day, changed the water every day, and it was like two weeks later the grandkids came down or something. They were like, oh, "You still have those flowers <laughs> for Mother's Day?" And you really can. You can <laughs> extend it for weeks yes. with just a, a basic, simple compound. You know, basic uh, what you got laying around the house. And, Everybody's got vodka, and yeah. especially nowadays, you know, you might get flowers so rarely you no. might want to make them last. I as cut long you flowers as possible every. Well, he other plants day. flowers in my yard. I am surrounded just, by they're flowers. They're everywhere. And yes. I love it. And he knows they're I everywhere. do. I mean, you know I'm just teasing That's you. Right. I don't need no bouquet. I'll go out in my yard and get That's my own bouquet. That's right. Well, All you right. said, you told me t uh, 15, 20 years ago. No, you said, well, how come I'm the landscaper, Mr. Right. Garden Doctor, and I got no yard? I you said, got I have yard. the worst yard in the county. And yeah. after that, why? Well, and you know She one, got a yard. The, the one way to get him to do it is to say, well, fine, I'll just do it myself. And of course I'm doing it wrong. You know I'm doing it wrong. I'm planning it like this in a row. Well, I'm doing it wrong. Well, I don't know any. I'm not the landscaper. So he came in, took over, and, and now I have a beautiful yeah, yard. Yeah, but it's gotten out of control. It requires a lot it's of upkeep. Out of I have control. beds that I don't even know what's in them because I, I lost my poppy this year. I know because somebody think, pulled it up, I think. You think so? They As think it, it, pulled, it, it looks pretty weedy when it's yeah. a baby, so. Yep. Yep. I don't know what you're looking at me for. <laughs> uh, what is your? What did you? Ha did you cover the uh, homemade? Bread? No, you didn't do the homemade. Well, bread what are you going to cover? <laughs> hey, I already covered everything. Why don't you talk about some uh, bovine TB? Yeah, well, you know, they found uh, bovine uh, tuberculosis uh, yes. in a cattle herd in May of 2016. Right. And they did some aggressive testing mm -hmm. because we want to maintain our TB free we, uh, yes. status that we have in since in nineteen Indiana. I don't even know what for a long long time well back in the eighties nineteen eighties and we've been TB free and uh, that's a grand thing eradicated it from the state and so when it came back in the, you know there was a little bit of a mini panic going on there and part of the mini panic was because this had been transmitted they feared and were pretty positive I believe they'd even found evidence been transferred to the deer herd. Now, there's a big stretch between finding it in cows and it getting to humans, okay? But it can happen. So it's, it's of great concern. Well, they did some very aggressive testing on all of the cattle herds and um, uh, have got that all under control with vaccinations or whatever it is they've done. Uh, to, well, they're to... testing 70 herds. And what it is is they where they found it last time mm -hmm. was in two herds. Now you may read that it was in three locations because one of the farmers had uh, had two herds had two her right. different location. So it's really only two herds. And what they're doing is they're testing the within a three mile radius of where that was found. So that includes seventy herds. They're going to be testing of cattle. Now right. But the deer right. they were testing all over the county of Fayette County. Now that Franklin was just the county, one. They don't, Union County. They don't test them and release them. It's only if someone shoots it and brings it in. Yeah, right? because you got okay. to test the the right. carcass so and we, the brain. That's and, a good thing to watch. But what we have to monitor regularly is the actual food chain through the market. Right. Right. So, but we the the concern of the Hunters was the the um, deer population, and last year, if you shot a deer, and the the the, the harvest seasons were more liberal because they wanted to thin the deer herd down, and they wanted to to decrease the exposure and everything. So this worked out. Uh, you know, they figured out how to do this, and they did the testing. And they, to my knowledge, they did not find any evidence of any of the deer that were harvested that were brought in that had bovine tuberculosis. Uh -huh. Now, I'm still, I have, I'm waiting on a call back that I didn't get for the show, so I can't definitively say that. However, um, uh, the, all of the testing that we found in the last report was July the 20th, 2017, was that uh, we were bovine free and to still, this point. We still maintain that status, yes. Now, now exactly. Uh, back to a point you were uh, making about something that is totally <laughs> to me. Two. Sorry. <laughs> now, the other thing I wanted to cover real quick, and then we're going to go to an outtake, is that um, uh, the algae bloom 
with this season yes. that we're having, we really anticipated that we would have a lot more algae bloom. But that didn't happen. So um, uh, we it was do. decreased. But there is enough of it. There is There's enough, enough of it where it, it a, is an issue. Yes. It is a major concern. And we'll concern. get right back to that. We're going to go to our caller, and uh, you're on uh, the air with Mr. and Mrs. Garden Doctor. How can we help you? Hi. Um, I was calling about hydrangeas. I was interested in propagating mm -hmm. one, and I wanted to know what to do. Okay. That is a very interesting question. Because, can it be done? Well, you can do it, but you have to, in the first place, you have to make sure that it's not a patented variety. If you're just using it for your own use, nobody really cares. But you can't go around cultivating uh, a patented variety and hybrids and so forth. Uh, you have to be careful for, and use them for but sale. But for home use only. But for home <laughs> use only, yes, not a problem. Now, the next problem is, is the plant that you're trying to hybrid, is it a grafted uh, plant or is it a true uh, hydrangea? And if that is the case, then it is actually a soft, woody stem. It's not a hard woody stem. So it puts it in a category of uh, fairly easy to propagate. And you propagate by cultivating uh, a, a, a cutting off from the branch. So you uh -huh. prune the blossom off and then you uh -huh. go down about two rows of leaves and you prune just under that. Then you strip the leaves off except for the very top set of leaves with your thumbnail so that you're scoring or scarring the uh, bark, and then if if you can dip it into root tone, mm -hmm, and stuff. then line out about oh twenty or thirty of these. Because, you'll probably lose some. They're not yeah, all going to take. Yeah, you're going to lose but... about forty or fifty percent of the. When you get into a uh, the spring of the year, you have a, a nice soft uh, growth to work with. But right now, it's hardened off because of the heat. Mm. So if if you can use just new growth, you're you're much better off. But then you, you dip them in root tone, and then you set them in a row, and preferably in a, in a garden patch where you can monitor them. Uh, some people even put a glass jar over the top for a little greenhouse effect. And uh, then every once in a while, go out there and pull one up and see if it is growing roots. And uh, sometimes you'll be very surprised at how many you can actually grow. And you can use the same method with lilacs, with, with any of your uh, woody plants that do ha produce soft stem in their new growth. I'm going to try this at home myself. Okay. Well, thank you okay. very much for your call. Appreciate yes. it very much. Okay. Uh -huh. that. All right. Thanks. And uh, we have another caller. You're on with Mr. and Mrs. Garden Doctor. How can we help you? Um, yeah. My daughter and son-in-law live down in Ecuador. Ecuador. Love... Wow. Yes, they live in Ecuador, and they love fruit. And so one of their first purchases when they moved down there was to buy a lemon tree. And it's in a big, it's in a big bucket, big container. It's not okay. like in the ground. But it's not growing very well, and they were wanting to know what they can do to help it grow more, like what kind of things does a lemon tree need <laughs> to grow well. I mean, there's plenty of sun. Well, so the, what else they need it's to do to the, it. There are nutritional needs that citrus plants uh, require I have a question, that though. are not normal. Is it going to stay living in the bucket? Oh, yeah. If it's a miniature or semi-dwarf, okay? you, okay. you can grow a lemon tree. Uh, I used to sell lemon trees all the time, and people would keep them for 10, 15 years. And they would only okay. grow to be like uh, four or five foot tall. But a citrus tree uh, that is eventually going to produce fruit uh, has different nutritional requirements than the, the, your standard apple tree, fruit tree, or, or, house or fruit plant. bush, or house mm -hmm. plant. And uh, they, they sell uh, citrus uh, fertilizer, specifically, uh, they used to sell it at Frank's, and I, I think they do For it most of the places. citrus fruit tree. Well, right. I don't think there's a Frank's in Ecuador. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what you put there, in your next care there package, There probably then. is not, but I'll bet you, since it is in Ecuador, and that's not a backwards country at all, that They've there are... They've got to have are, a farm feed they, store they somewhere. They have citrus uh, fertilizer available somewhere down there, and if not, I will give you a list of... a. a Somebody Ingredients, you can, maybe? You can order on Amazon and get it sent oh, to you. Oh, there you go. So, 
Uh, but you want to put this, this citrus fertilizer on there, but let me tell you something that's going to happen further down the lane. Uh, if you use apples, cut apples to put around the plant when it's, when it's uh, producing blossom, this will help it uh -huh. set fruit much better. You'll get much more fruit production on the top. The pectin in apples is an amazing property, Oh, the pectin property, does, isn't a, it? It does a wonderful thing. And then you definitely want to take a round paintbrush and go from blossom to blossom to blossom to make uh -huh. sure that every single blossom is pollinated. Now, it works better if while you're doing that, you make this noise. Oh, right. <laughs> okay. It actually does. Well, and if you, know, you sing to them, it's, it's even better. Be you know, pollinating them. Da, 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 da. <laughs> anyway, so, um, but really, you need to, because if not, you, gotta, you know, they right. only bear fruit. Uh, it's a rarity. It's not like yeah, a cucumber it, goes on and exactly. on and on. Exactly. Now there are some of the of the lemon and lime uh, uh, miniatures that will produce um, uh, every year, but most of them they have to go into a, a rest period before they produce. There's one of them that actually produces twice a year. So, but you want to get every single one you can get, and when they are in fruit, when as soon as the blossom has been pollinated. You need to step up the fertilizer accordingly because they require a lot of it's nutrients. It's a fruit factory now. To you got to feed it. That's right. Yep. yep. And I have. I love growing. I used to grow citrus in my greenhouse uh, all year round. But uh, so thank God for Amazon. Now we know how we can get them some citrus fertilizer. Amazon has citrus fertilizer. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. All right, well, thank you. I'll thank you very much for your that. call all the way Thanks from Ecuador. I think that's almost the furthest away we have heard from Ecuador. Really? Yeah. Now, we, we got a Well, a she call. said it was her son and daughter-in-law, daughter and son-in-law. Well, oh, yeah, well, that, still, we're not question, getting a call from Ecuador. The question that's right. comes from it's Ecuador. It's still from, they're still coming uh, from it Ecuador. It counts. Thank you for the call. <laughs> Appreciate right, it very, bye. very much. Thank bye you. now. Now, um, Ecuador. I Ecuador. wanted to get back to this algae thing because it, it scares me because here uh, we went out. This is what we're talking about, lake algae, the, lake the green algae. bloom, the yes. uh, red bloom. Yeah. Now, right now, the numbers are, oh, it's not enough for the no swimming warning yeah, yet. Yeah, but. But there is a warning out for the blue-green algae in the lake, and that's at Brookville Lake, at the Mounds, at Quakertown. They tested a couple different places, and at the Whitewater State Park, the lake there. Um, has also got higher than should be levels of blue-green algae. Now, our little dog, Toby, we took him out on the lake on Sunday. He's not big on swimming, but I took him in the water, and I said, oh, isn't that cute? And I had him swim to shore. Well, two days ago, which was about a day and a half after that, he started having diarrhea and acting like he doesn't feel well, and I chalked it up to Dad fed him some pepperoni, and that's surely what mm. did it. But then I got to thinking... Because they warn you, if your dog goes swimming in the lake and then licks, they, they're susceptible to getting more of it because they're going to lick their fur all over the place. They're not just going to get it in their eyes or get it splashed in their mouth like we do and go home and take a shower. They're licking it and eating it off their whole entire body from self-cleaning and can make them very ill and it can be fatal. Now, I cannot believe I swam my dog in the lake and didn't come home and give him a bath. It totally escaped me. Um, and we, we are going to that's what made him follow sick. up on that and see what, what's going on there because that's, be that's very quite scary. Careful. And our dog is only this big. Yeah, he's a little guy. And, he's... you know, I take the grandkids swimming at the lake, and we hit the shower house right after. I bring shampoo and everything. so we Wash can, it completely you know, off, yeah, because it is. A, it, and, and there are ways that we could reduce this if we had. A half ounce of common sense. Well, I've never heard we, of such a thing in New Hampshire. We don't no, seem no. to have any common Not sense. A, their so. water so crystal clear coming down the river. Yeah. That, of course, it's a different environment. However, mm -hmm. up there you can get beaver fever. Yes, you can. That's you right. You can get beaver fever up there, and I've had it before, and it's no fun. Oh, uh, wow. Don't it's, want that. It's like the... the now, the, the, we do... I did go over the homemade remedies, or did I not yet? Of what? Um, no, not for roses. For, well, for rose bush diseases. Right yeah. now. No, you didn't go over that. We were talking about it, but you didn't go over it. Well, not only do you, you know, it's not just roses, but this was specifically written and tailored to rose bushes um, and the specific conditions that affect them and what you can use and make at home to take care of those things. 
Now, uh, one of the things right now we're having an issue with is Japanese beetles. Oh, know. boy. <laughs> As you've noticed, they if you've gone are out <laughs> everywhere. And you see the leaves on something that looks like a piece of lace, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I've got a couple of those. Believe me. They seem to really like one plant. Yeah, they will go to others. the red ones first. That, that's why roses, because roses uh, okay. have a reddish cast to their foliage. They do, yeah. um, The purple leaf plum, the sanduskies, the uh, sand cherries, um, um, uh, nine bark, red leaf nine bark, all of the red leafed plants seem to be uh, their attract, that. attract them first. And then when they're done with that, they'll eat anything. They'll eat everything. Uh, but they're so simple to control. If you, if, of course, not with this rain, you spray it, it washes off. You spray well, it, it washes off. One of the best off. ways to protect off. them is to physically hand pick them off your plants, throw them in a bucket of soapy water. Yeah. Um, I had a lady that vacuumed them, and okay, let me tell you, it was amazing. She had designed oh, wow, this like flat it. thing, <laughs> and it had a targeted center. Great and idea. she would zip, 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 yep. zip, zip, gone. She <laughs> <laughs> I love it. She took great pleasure in vacuuming <laughs> the little beggars down into the bottom, and she also did the same thing with bagworms, but it required more oh, suction. and you need a bigger attachment. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so what are the organic methods for well, control. Well, for instance, your your roses are often attacked by aphids or sp and spider mites. Now, um, what they suggest is making an insecticidal soap solution, which is a teaspoon of vegetable oil, a teaspoon of dishwashing liquid, and a cup of water. Okay? You can mix that together. Hmm. Or you can also, and they give you a couple of different recipes, three tablespoons of just plain soap to a gallon of water. What you want to do is cover the leaves, you spray it, or, you know. Now, are they specifying the soap? No, just some kind of dish soap, I, dishwashing liquid. We used to use a specific type of soap, and I can't I wonder really what it tell was. you what it was now. Palm olive for your fingernails? Mm. No? I don't know. It well, sounds reasonable. It says uh, to coat the leaves, both sides, especially the underside when it comes to aphids and mites, the underside of the leaves. Uh, let it sit on there for a few hours. And you it know why thoroughly. soap works? Because mm, it coats and suffocates, I think. It dissolves the outer it, uh, protection. It oh. actually dissolves their exoskeleton. Okay. And I, they I die from exposure. Okay, you have uh, a caller. We have a caller, yes. You uh, you're on the line with uh, Mr. and Mrs. Garden Doctor. How can we help you? Hello, go ahead. Oh, uh, I, I got some uh, twenty tomato plants out in pots, and they're about uh, ripen, but they're getting rotten spots, and I'm wondering what to do. Oh boy, uh, the rotten spots, of course, are from the uh, excessive amount of water that we're getting. Um, if but you... it does it every year. Oh, I it heard, does. Yeah, I heard you can put a tom in them at a spot, but I don't know if that's true or not. Put a what? You can put a what, please? A tum. You know, for your stomach, put it in there. Oh, a tums. A tums. Yeah, you know what? calcium. Yes, we the did calcium this. calcium that right. is in that, yes. Okay. Will that work? Well, yes, you but know? you would have to do it early. Yeah. And um, if you're getting... Oh, they're ripening, but they just rotten and they're big Yeah, and okay, high. that's blossom end rot. And uh. blossom end rot can be prevented... Uh, next year, what you need to do is put calcium, which is lime, and you want to put lime on the, on the entire area where you are growing tomatoes. Now, if you have grown tomatoes there in the last two or three years in a row, then this rot is in the soil, and it will get on your tomatoes every single yes, year. you have to move where you're so, planting. I always put new dirt in the pots. I got new dirt for the pots. It shouldn't do it. These okay, are really so nice tomatoes. Containers. Shame. If they're in the in the pots and you're putting new dirt in there, you oh. need to take a disinfectant and flush out the pot. Oh. Okay, so what you want to do is take a solution of bleach, not a very high one. Doesn't take much. About two percent. 
Yeah. And you want to rinse it around in there in that pot really good. Scrub it in there real good. Rinse it yeah. out. Do it again. Because you're carrying the uh, blight over from year to year to year. And oh. that's, that's in the not pot. unusual right. at all. You're changing the soil, doing all the right things, but that pot is still The pot is still the carrier, okay. and eventually it just saturates the soil. Ah. Now, the other thing that you want to do is to mix into your next year... Mix into your potting soil some um, uh, 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 lime, but this year you might be able to save some of those by buying a product called Tomato Saver. It's called Tomato Saver. It's as simple as that. And but it seems like if the, if the tomatoes in the uh, where it's not real sunny does better than the ones them the ones that's doing it the ones in the sun more. Yeah, the the huh. the greater the amount of sun, it should decrease if it was a um, an insect or a disease that was susceptible to the sun. But this one is not. This one oh. goes into the root structure, into the stem of the plant, and and comes out through the fruit. But you may be able to sell save some of the later uh, producing. Because you'll probably fruit. have more coming on. Oh yeah, and, and maybe yeah, they won't better. rot. Get you a, 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 a spray bottle of Tomato Saver. And that's the name of it, Tomato Saver. Yes, okay. and spray it on the leaves, pr spray it on the whole plant. You can actually drink this stuff. It's, it's safe. It's safe. Uh, oh, okay. But spray it on there, wait a couple of days, spray it on again, wait a couple of days. You really can't overdo it with this stuff. It's an organic. All it is is liquid calcium. Uh, you're just adding that into the leaves to see if it'll go into the stem in time for your next fruit, not this fruit. This fruit's already ruined. I have a question. Um, if uh, the fruit that's on there now, if she sees a tomato on there that's starting to have the rotten spot, whether it's ripe or not, should she get rid of it? Yeah, get cut, rid it, of all? cut it off. Yeah, I, I pull okay. them off. I throw them away. Yeah, okay. pull them And another thing, you've got to be careful where you throw them away at because this can reinfect just by being oh, in the it's, area. Oh, it's over in the store. Okay, good. <laughs> okay. Good. But you do need to disinfect those, those containers next year. Use oh, a soil okay. that is sterile. Some of the soils are not sterile. They're just dirt in a bag. Uh, use the Probably the soil. easiest way to do it would be to take one of those big tubs you use like for storage and make your bleach water solution and put yeah. your pot in there and spin it around, right? And then you could reuse the, the water. Pot, I don't know how big your pot is. Pot. Well, I don't either. Come to think of you it. really need to. They're okay. big pots. Now find some way to dip them. Yeah, they or really wash should them. be dipped. Exterior, interior, and even the the the, uh, the tray that goes under them. The whole thing has to be disinfected in and order to I get was, rid of them. I, I was going to ask you how you get rid of them old Rosa Sharon. They're just growing crazy. I, I <laughs> they cut do. them, I saw yeah. them, I poured them, and they it's still It's pretty when back. you have one, it's we pretty have two them and three. Everywhere. I hate them. We have 200. I hate them. It's awful. We I just hate everywhere. them. I wish I'd never got them. There <laughs> is like a weeds, way to get they? rid of them, though. <laughs> if, you, if you take a glove and you put a uh, plast a, a Playtex glove on first, and then a cloth glove next, and then you get a container that is marked for poison ivy and brush control, and you kind of put a little bit of it on your on the on the cloth glove, wring the, the glove out, and then wipe it on those stems. Now your hand is protected because you've got the oh, rubber I glove. Bet on I, your bet hands. I bet I got a, or a hundred of them just going. Well, you just like wipe the, them like this. Once wipe you wipe it up on die. that stem, it'll kill that plant Down out, to the and root. it'll kill the root out. And then you need to apply a weed preventer right now, because right now is when the Rose of Sharon are in bloom, and they're I spreading know. their seeds everywhere. Yeah, they get those so seeds. So right now... I don't like them. <laughs> <laughs> they're pretty for a minute. A... <laughs> right now is when you put down the your weed preventer. Well, I'd be better off with, to hire somebody when I'm 80 years old. I don't like <laughs> Well, <laughs> if you're... I got a hundred of them. 80 years old, you <laughs> oh. may want to... Yeah, you may want to find somebody Don't to help you, you out a little bit. Don't you have some grandkids make them do it? <laughs> you must have a... I would think something would kill them. A root, so I put 
picked up on them, and they just keep a coming up worse for every year. Yeah, they will. They're, They're very aggressive. They They're are. very tough. And more and, and more seeds We have all had the to time. eradicate them in more places than one where we Weed just preventer, dug that, them all out. It stops the and got seeds rid of them. from germinating. So right. it won't help you this minute, but it'll help you next go around, nope. and next go around, and next go around. And and the best weed preventer, and it's difficult to get a hold of right now for because you would need a small amount. Uh, there's a new product out called Snapshot, and it will prevent that from growing. Yes. Do we have time to run our outtake? Oh, Thank yeah, you very much we? for your call. We appreciate it yes, very, very thank much. Thank you. Thank you. And we will Take see care. you later. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. Right. And Bye -bye. how many minutes we got left, bud? Uh, about 10 minutes. Okay. I think we did an outtake. Do we have time to run that? Okay. All right. We're going to run the outtake, and then we'll be right back with yes. you. Hello, and thank you for joining us again. We wanted to talk a little bit about soil deficiencies and how it can affect your plants. And I actually have a prime example of that right here at my front door. We have planted a couple of urns that have petunias in them. Uh, one is in this larger tall urn here, and you can see that the foliage is pale and yellow and it's just not green and vibrant as it should and could be. Um, even though the plant seems to be quite healthy. Now, please excuse our weeds. We haven't had the chance to do weeding as our health hasn't been what it used to be. Uh, but move on over here to this beautiful urn here, and it is lush and green. Look at the foliage on that. That's how it should be. Now, there are a couple of reasons why this could have happened. One of them being that the soil that's in the urn. The soil in this urn is probably a couple years old. I had to change it every year like I should. And that one's probably a year younger. So that's a little bit newer soil. And it could be deficient in nutrients. Now the two nutrients that tend to lead to this problem, which is called chlorosis, is either a lack of iron or a lack of nitrogen. Now, if the problem is iron, what you would do is take iron sulfate, mix it in some soil, and spread it around the base of the plant on top of the soil so that will water into your plant and provide it with the iron. The other remedy, if it's a nitrogen issue, is to put coffee grounds, easy enough, coffee grounds around the soil at the top of the plant, and that will provide the plant with that nutrient that it needs, the nitrogen. Now I wanted to try a little experiment to see which it was. And so I took this little kitty cat here that was that is our granddaughter Rowan's and it's a little bit rusty. It's made out of metal and when metal rusts that actually is oxidation and that is equal to iron sulfate. So I stuck the little kitty cat in here and was hoping some of that rust might leach into the soil and it appears to be greening up a little bit right around the base of this kitty cat and it's been about a week so but i'm not quite sure so i went ahead and took coffee grounds and put coffee grounds all in the soil under the plant and we'll see if that has any effect now i could just go ahead and put the iron sulfate on there and and watch it green up and call it a day but i'm curious to know for sure which nutrient it is so we'll see if the coffee grounds have any effect whatsoever on that. If not, if I don't see anything within a week, I'm going to go ahead and treat it with that iron sulfate and see if I'm sure that hopefully will bring it back to green. Now in addition, something else I wanted to mention is sometimes different varieties of the same plant are weaker or stronger. Now this tends to be one of the striped uh, petunias there as opposed to the solid color which have been around for a while and sometimes when they make a specialty plant like that you know come up with it it tends to be a weaker plant and I'm not saying that this is that could be but I do know from past experience for instance that a white rose tends to be a weaker plant overall than a red rose so just another consideration I wanted to throw out there for you to think about now we'll move on over to my garden and take a look at what's happening over there in the vegetable. Now as you can see I'm coming out of the jungle but I want to show you what we have going on over here. These seed were seedlings on our last show. They were probably only a few inches tall. This is my cucumber patch here. Now we didn't put out a big garden this year like we usually do but this worked out really well. I've just tucked these little shoots right into the fence as they come along 
and it has grown right up the fence. Now I have got some beautiful cucumbers all over the place. Here we go, a couple right here. And look how easy this picking is. Up the fence, you don't have to do all the bending over on your hands and knees. And you got cucumbers and they look absolutely gorgeous on this fence. So inside the fence, here's what we have here. We didn't do a whole lot, like I said, but we put in some tomato plants. Toby's already in there checking those out for me. And we put our tomato plants in cages here in the same holes that we had cut through the plastic last year. What we had done is completely laid down plastic and then we cut holes where we would want to space and plant plants. So as you can see, the base of this plant is actually coming up through a hole in the plastic, which is then covered with straw and everything is absolutely beautiful and lush in here. In the center, I have a banana tree. Yes, a banana tree. Our in-law, daughter-in-law and her family from Indianapolis for years have been growing these banana trees, which get to be 10 feet tall and actually producing bananas. And every winter they dig them up, protect them, put them in the basement. And next year in the spring, they plant them again and start all over. So I just had to have a piece of this in my garden. And now if you look here on the inside of the fence, again, cucumbers right here, ready for the picking. Oh boy, I guess I better get out here and do some picking. Okay, well, thank you for joining us and we're gonna send it back to the studio. Now here we are in another section of our garden and I wanted to show you our weed control in this area. Now you see we have the tomatoes in cages along either side here. And then in the center we have cantaloupe growing. And what we have done is around where the base of the plant of the cantaloupe, we have used sheets of this corrugated plastic. Now here's the thing, we used what we had. Okay, all you have to do is use what you have. You can use the plastic bags from your mulch that you put around your flower beds. You can use cardboard boxes for that are in your garage piling up from your Amazon orders. And you can just put those around. Now, as you can see in the middle here, yes, yeah, so we have a couple of weeds. You know what? Let's just pull that right out. Look how easy that is. You have one little section of weeds and you know what? I'm done. So that's how we control weeds. You can't fight the weeds. You can't stop them from growing. You can control them from growing where you don't want them. So try to be one with your garden and everything will be just Now, here we are in another area we wanted to talk to you about. The garden doctor has always stressed the importance of the right plant for the right place. Now there are plants in the wrong place that can actually cause damage to the building where they are and really needs to be addressed. Now if you will look over here, there were giant shrubs here that are now cut off at the bottom. We're going to get those stumps out of there. But you can see the marks on the side of the building from where those, those shrubs were swaying back and forth for years untrimmed and just allowed to grow wild. So those have been removed. Then you can see here the roots on the building the vine actually attaches itself and, and, and deteriorates underneath whatever it's attaching to. And if you look over here to this window, the plant has actually decided to take over this building and make its own greenhouse. This window is absolutely chock full and I have not checked on the inside. Now if you look down below, there is also moss on the top of the soil. Not sure if you can see that where it was just too damp and never got sun from the coverage of the shrubs. And then as well along the foundation as the dirt settles, there is a crack over here that would allow water to get into the foundation. Now the one thing the garden doctor has always stressed is to slope away from your house. Bank up to your house, slope away from it because water will follow gravity and go down that slope away from the house and that's where you want it away from your house so if you're thinking about putting in shrubs plants that's wonderful we love it however remember the right plant for the right place thank you for joining us 
don't know why I'm hey, doing folks, this. we're back, but we don't have very much time, so I want to tell you it's been a pleasure to be here. And who was that brilliant Namaste. woman that was on I that don't program? Know. We are, by the way, we are Thank not you. having a plant sale today due to health conditions. This, this year, so we are no this year, sale. so we are not having a plant sale. No plant sale. Uh, people driving down the drive. Thanks in the studio. Thank Justin, you very much for John. watching. Thanks everybody back in the studio for helping us out. We will see you on the next show, which is in two weeks. Thank you again. Bye. The Garden Doctor. The Garden Doctor.